Thank you very much for being here and welcome to our series of daily reading. Um, I am going to continue with some reflection while Karen continues on reading. I hope you are following along. Um, Karen will continue and read and as I some of what's already read, um, we are still reflecting on to the reader section, which is um, like uh, the preface um, written um, by the man himself, um, Carl Rogers. And remember, we are reading this book, Carl Rogers, on becoming a person, a therapist, a view of psychotherapy. Um, remember, Carl Rogers um, was um, um, considered to be, had been considered to be the number one clinician um, in the 20th century, was a pioneer of human humanistic psychology he was um the originator of a strength base of patient-centered care and in and he was also the first to bring research and rigor in the psychotherapy and um with this book really is the main um one of the best truly um, um of, of, of its kind now he said a motive which means a great deal to me um, is, um, it has to do with the great. In fact, the um, he talked here about men's. Um, oh, oh, sorry, I, I have to take. I have to go back here. The desperate need of our times for more basic knowledge and more competent skills in dealing with the tensions in human relationships. He talked about this as one more motive, motive for him to for writing this book. He, at that time, we're talking about 1961, okay? Um, obviously, this is around the time of, 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 of war and, and all. He says, indeed, there is a desperation for more basic knowledge and to deal with tensions in human relationships. It was around the same time that would give rise to what we call the, nego the, the, the Harvard Negotiation Project. Um, if you, um, there is Roger Fisher, there is um, the book that's written that is getting to, yes, the difficult conversations because the world in a way was, was in turmoil. And he says, men's awesome scientific advances into the infinitude of space as well as the infinitude of subatomic particles seems most likely to lead to the total destruction of our world unless we can make great advances in understanding and dealing with interpersonal and intergroup tensions. There you go. Here's a man as a clinician who was able to see the big picture. No wonder he is the number one clinician in the 20th century and he's leaving. He left his legacy for us. He says we are to advocate for a deeper understanding of how to deal with interpersonal and intergroup tensions. Now, here's the thing here that's very important. Winnicott, who was a psychoanalyst, a pediatric psychoanalyst, a child psychoanalyst, says, our clients' conflicts stem from relationship difficulties and it will take some form of relationship repair in order to actually really help them um heal from those relationship from those conflicts here's actually uh, carl rogers saying more or less the same thing we have a number of advances of in in in, in technology in science but this will need to be paired up with a deeper knowledge of the underst and understanding of human relationships. We already, he says, possess learnings which put to use would help to decrease the interracial, industrial, and international tensions which exist. Again, we're talking about it's all about the war, the Vietnam War, right? So not only we need deeper, more knowledge, deeper understanding, but he's also advocating for us to put to use what we already possess. Knowledge is not power unless it's being put to use. We already possess learning, which put to use would help to decrease the interracial, industrial, and international tensions which exist. 
And then he also continued to say, I hope it will be evident that these learnings used preventively huh, could aid in the development of nature, non-defensive, understanding persons who, who deal constructively with future tensions as they arise. If I can thus make clear to a significant number of people the unused resource knowledge already available in the realm of interpersonal relationships, I will feel greatly awarded. That is amazing. He's saying, and this is exactly what we're doing today, what we're seeing today. And what we are seeing today is even more of that. A lot of knowledge, but there's a gap in how that um, trickles down to, to, to the clinical work we do. That's really one of the reasons why the Sweet Institute exists, to bridge that gap, to look at all those 500 treatment modalities that we have in mental health, for example, and to bridge that gap, to look at the, all the evidence-based practices or 30 to, to really bridge that gap, to look at the latest in science and to really bridge that gap, to look at what the word is that's being used in clinical care and to bridge that gap. Thank you for doing this with us, for reading this. And then um, we're done with the reflection for the reader. Um, really, tomorrow I will move on to the reflection on the first chapter, which Karen has already started reading. Happy Friday. Take care. Thank you for being here. Bye-bye.